Okay, so this is part two of my calculation of the equation of motion for linear drag. Uh, so let's just look at this stuff up here. This is what I did before, just a quick recap. So here's my ball or object, whatever it's moving this way in one dimension. There's a backwards pushing force proportional to the velocity. Uh, and so you can set this equation up. The F net, we'll just do the only, the, the, this negative BV is equal to MA. Uh, you can use that to integrate and solve for the velocity as a function of time. I get this expression, and then I can integrate again to get the position as a function of time, and I get that, and I already did that, okay, uh, where b is just some parameter. Now, how, ooh, how, ooh, that doesn't, so how we're going to do this numerically. So numerically, what we're going to do is to step one, uh, you know, calculate the force on the object. And from the force, I can calculate it's because I'm going to have to start with some known value for B, for the mass, and for the velocity, and the position. I can calculate the force based on this equation, and I can use that to calculate the acceleration. Once I have the acceleration, I can break the problem into a small time step, and during that time step, I can calculate the new velocity uh, based on the definition of acceleration right here. I can calculate this velocity uh, using the acceleration and the small time step and add that to the old velocity and get the new one. And then I can use that velocity and the definition of, this is technically the average velocity, to do the same thing to find the new position. And this, this is, makes an assumption that the velocity is constant, which it's not. But if the time interval is small enough, it should work. And then I can update time and just keep redoing this for until I want to stop. And that's that. Okay, so let's get working on it. Uh, the first thing we need to do is to, um, well, I'm going to need to make a graph. So let's say t graph equals graph. Uh, x title equals uh, time in seconds and then y title equals position that's what I'm going to plot in meters and then let's let's do f1 equals g curve colors blue one day I'm going to change that just to mess people up okay I need to start off with some values. In a numerical calculation, we can't calculate things exactly. We, we have to do it for a particular situation with particular numbers. So I'm going to say my starting velocity is 10. I, I just picked that. My drag coefficient is 1. My mass is 1. You can change these later if you want. The starting time is 0. And then the time step is 0 0.01. OK. So I'm going to use those in another calculation, but first I want to do the following. Let's start with a variable v, v equals v0. So because this is the one we're going to change, I don't want to change the starting velocity. I am going to have this other velocity that changes each time I go through the, the loop. Uh, and the same thing for, I need an initial x. x equals x0. Let's just put that up here. x0 equals 0. And you'll notice also there's no units here because the Python wants to do calculations. If you put uh, letters in there, it's going to confuse it. If you want, and you want to put a comment, meters per second, meters, and so forth like that. This was kilograms, seconds per meters per second. Wait, it was one over, it was, no, it was, uh, it was in seconds per Newton. I don't know, I'm leaving it off. Okay, um, so now let's do a loop. So while t is less than 10, the first thing I'm going to want to do is to calculate the force. So let's say f equals negative b times v. That was just like what we said. Okay, now I'm going to use that to calculate the acceleration. a equals f over m. And yeah, you could do that one step. I'm just trying to be clear. Now I know the acceleration. I can calculate the new velocity. v equals v plus a times dt. So this is the step where one, it's a little bit different than an equation because it's an assignment right here. Oops, it's an assignment right there. I'm make, taking the velocity, adding a times dt, and making that the new velocity. Okay, so that is v1 and v2. I, I feel like I say that every time. X equal, now we're gonna update the position, x plus v times dt, uh, and then update time. Technically, I should plot this first. F1.plot, uh, the time, and the x and then update time. And then we should save it, because you never know. Uh, linear drag two, and that actually is the second time I did this, so. And let's run it. Check that out, it worked. I'm pretty excited. 
Okay, so this says it starts off uh, with some, the slope of this is, is positive and decreasing and eventually ends up at some, it stops, essentially stops. Uh, let's just plot uh, T versus V uh, without changing the, the labels just to see what that looks like. So this is, starts off with a high velocity and then decreases, which is what we'd expect. Okay, now I could do, um, I, could, I could change this uh, parameter if you wanted to 0.5. That's cool, cool, cool. Um, it's just different, that's fine. Okay, let's check something, okay? Because I'm going to make sure that my time step is small enough. So let's print the final velocity. At the final position, print x. I'll just do it like that. And so you see here that it ends up at 19.7682. Now, what if I make the time step 0.1? I get a different number. Okay. So 0.1 is not big enough. Uh, what about 0.05? What if I make that half as much? 0.05. So I get 19.37. Now let's make that point, uh, make that half again, 0.25. Remember this number, 37. Okay, so it's still changing. So let's make that uh, back down to 0.1. 19.768. Uh, let's make that even smaller. 19.81 so it is still changing so probably my time interval wasn't big enough probably 0 0.001 is going to be yeah so now we're not really changing anymore that's one way you can find out how big your time interval needs to be if you keep changing it and the the, the final answer changes then it probably wasn't good enough okay so in this case i feel 0 0.001 is good enough but now what i want to do is to compare this with the analytical expression i want to plot this function right here Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a new graph. Let's call it uh, F2 equals G curve, color equals color dot red. And now I want to plot that. So I'm going to go down here uh, and let's print that X. And then let's print it, print it another way too. So I'm going to need to reset things. I'm going to need a new X. I'm going to see the X at back equal to zero and T back equal to zero. Now I'm going to make a new loop while less than 10 and I want to calculate the position so I'm say x equals x0 plus v0 v0 times well, what was it m over b times m let's put that as m over b so it looks the same times 1 minus the exponential e is that right e to the negative b t over m negative b times t divided by m there is no dt there isn't no, i'm not calculating the next step i'm calculating the exact value always starting from the beginning now i do need to update time just for my loop t equals t plus dt and in this case actually my dt could be anything it doesn't really matter i could put uh dt equals one actually let's go up here and make this g dots so you'll see Okay, let's run it. Oh, and I wanted to print out. Well, that won't work. It will work. Yes. Now nah, let's let's not. Hmm. Aha! I didn't plot it. Dummy. F two dot plot t x. There you go. Right on there. Look, I'm even using large time steps because it's not using the time step to get these values. It's calculating them exactly. But you'll notice that it's right on top of it. Let's go back over here and change this to uh, 0.1. And see, it doesn't it doesn't fit as well. You'll see that. Okay. So you can also see there. But in general, uh, the two value the two calculations match up extremely well, and that's cool. So which one's better? Is it better to do it analytically or better to do it numerically? Well, I would say in this case, it's better to do it analytically because once you get that equation, I have all the values. I have every single expression. All I have to do is plot this simple equation. However, there are some cases where finding the analytical solution is super difficult. In that case, you would you would really want to do it numerically. Okay, and we're going to do that, but not now. I'm going to end this right here. I'll include the link to this below, uh, so I'll talk to you guys later.